Now he's so worthy to be praised. Come on, give them your hands and come on, give God the praise. Come on, tell them, thank you. Ah, come on, tell them, thank you, this morning. Thank you, thank you. Come on, tell them, thank you. Samuel's 15. And I come to let you know 
today. The reason you walk through so much because you are not it. You're not it. You don't know who you are. But the power live on the inside. The spirit live on the inside. I want you to say what spirit live on the inside of you. Come on. See, we go out and come in here get ready to push everything out. That's not like him. That's when you see him, you mess up, you don't feel right. Because God on the inside of you. He pushes stuff out of you. Hallelujah. When God come in, the devil got to go out. Amen. And see, you don't know the cost, the, the, the price that that been paid on Calvary for the anointing. And when you're going through different stuff, different struggles, different pain, different hurt, different setback, you have to cry. You can't take it. Your body can only take so much because God is ready to give you a new anointing. New. Samuel's 15 and 1 says Samuel also said unto Saul the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people over Israel now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord hallelujah God have sent me to anoint you Today, hearten unto the voice of the Lord. Hearten to the voice of the Lord. The anointing will put you in a place you don't want to be. The anointing will put you in an uncomfortable place. I'm in an uncomfortable place, but I'm still worshiping. Who are in an uncomfortable place this morning? You're uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable with your health. You're uncomfortable with your children. You're uncomfortable with your marriage. You're uncomfortable with your job. You're uncomfortable with how you look. You're uncomfortable on your job. You're uncomfortable with your finances. You're uncomfortable on this morning. And you're going real uncomfortable because you praise God in an uncomfortable realm. Hallelujah. You're going to be tried in the fire. You're going to be tried. Your faith going to be tried. God will bring you things that you want. And then sometimes when this stuff that we want, then we do a withdrawal. Lack of praying. Lack of church. Lack of standing your word. I'm covered now. I'm in my house. I'm in my, I got my car. I got my job. I got everything under control. So I might call but I might not. I might go to church and I might not. I might pray, I might not. I might dance, I might not. I might live home, I might not. Because we get too uncomfortable. We get too comfortable with the blessing. God speak to me. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, the way. Oh, yeah, the way. Oh, Speak to the people. We get so comfortable. When we, 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 we have to pray all the time, we fast all the time, we stay in the church all the time. We, Build the lifestyle. Then now you get your house, your car, your job, your business, your money, your ministry. And now you got money now. Now I might go to church. I might sign. I might do a tea side. I might go see. Amen. I might do my position. Depending on where I'm at. So God anointed Saul to be king. God will want you for position. And sometimes God allow you to walk on grace when you keep messing up. You ride on grace, but once I'm giving you time to get it right. Like a child keep messing up, you give them time to get it right. Then you take the phone, then you take the computer. Yeah. But you give them time for them to get yourself together. I'm going to give you time to get your grace together. But you don't get your grace together, I'll have to do something. So God give us time to get things right. He give us time. He give us time. God give you a position, but God will give you a better position in your job. He will give you a better position in ministry. Because I want you to do 
it all apart, right? And see, you got to be faithful. He says the book of Matthew said, be faithful over little things. Be faithful over cleaning up. Be faithful over urchin. Be faithful over catching people. Be, he said, be faithful over the little things that I make the ruler over many. Everybody trying to go way up there, but you need to be the first work first. Do the, the, the don't despise small beginnings. Sometimes people look down, look down and believe you. Sometimes people look down on believe you. Sometimes people look down on people will outgrow you. Sometimes people look down on people will be blessed more. And see, when you, whatever you do for the church, whatever you buy for the church, whatever you do for the church, you do it to the Lord. And the Bible says when you do it in secret, they're going to tell you nobody will treat you for the church. Nobody that you gave to the pastor. Nobody that you gave to church. That's between you and God. This is what you're doing in secret. I'm going to reward you back for blessing my church. I'm going to reward you back for blessing me and the woman of God. I'm going to reward you back. This is I reward you, right? This is what you're doing in secret. I reward you with open. I'm going to reward you open. And then when you lay into the church, it's the Holy Ghost telling you that it was God speaking to you. to do it. Amen. But you go to worry about all you did for the church, you don't get that reward. Because you already don't talk. But you do in secret. He rewards you openly. You're not doing it to man. You're not you're doing it to the what? To the Lord. And God assigned you to do it because he knows you don't carry the assignment out. Amen. He, you know, he gives people to do this, to do that, to do this, to do that. But you carry it out secretly. And God will reward you openly. He will reward you even more because you sacrifice and put the church first. Sacrifice! 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 God anointed Saul to the king. Israelite asked for a king. They wanted a king. They wanted something they could touch. They wanted something they could see. They wanted somebody they could talk to. They didn't have a king, but they wanted a king. And sometimes you want something so bad, and God give it to you. You want a man so bad, God give it to you, and then you end up divorced, then you end up getting beat up, or bruised, and messed up. Don't be all eating up with the unbeliever. Mm-hmm. At least you got somebody in the church, you can pray to them to go to church, get some deliverance, and then go to church. Oh. I don't know. Because nothing on me with the unbeliever. Because y'all gonna bump it. You go to church and they stay in that home. Then the Bible says the sixth power won't be six five man. We'll say that person if they won't. It's an ill thing. Amen. So we're wasting time and in vain to vain. We do a lot of stuff in vain. I did a lot of stuff in vain. I wish that I wanted down, but it's too late now. But I can't help you, so you're going to waste 20, 30 years in vain. I can help you. Amen. Amen. It messed up relationship, messed up marriage, in vain. Come on, say amen. Amen. Wasting time, wasting your time, your skill. Wasting the anointing in your life, wasting the person of God, wasting the will of God. Because when you get with different people, they're going to pull you out of the will of Christ. Speak the Holy Ghost. Speak the Holy Ghost. Speak the Holy Ghost. Say those. Amen. I also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me. He said, He said, He said, God sent me to anoint you. Who do send? Who did send your Lord? Who did the Lord? Come on, we just read, who do he anoint? Saul. He didn't, he didn't say, come on. He didn't say Pookie. He didn't say Juba. He didn't say Saul. He gave him the name. Amen. And it says, verse 2 says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalekite did to Israel. How he laid away from him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Okay, now God said he remembered them like a they they did something to Israelite. They stole them. They killed some of them. They stole behind their back. So God said, I remember what the devil did to you. He didn't get away. 
and we're going this morning. Uh, I'm going to turn around and I'm asking your life, but you got something in your life that's strong for you, don't deceive you, don't hurt you, don't bruise you, don't use you, don't want to get you. The boss said that night, he's out there. Fight to live. Fight for your marriage. Fight. 
God, enemy, and the Amorites, he had been alone to deal with it. And verse 3 says, See, God is raising the warriors. God can worry us a sign of it to go to devil territory to take stuff back. Amen. 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 Or if you go to devil territory to take stuff back, then they come in to attack. Uh -huh. Try to attack because you're mad because they took back with God. They <laughs> trying to take God's stuff back. Because of the Jesus, we saw. We saw. We're trying to take everything back. Amen. I come to confuse the enemy on this morning. I come to every star, every dog, and save in this church. Hallelujah. Come to be a church. I put the devil down in captive, down in bondage. I come to set up free this morning. Hallelujah. Every star, every dog, they shall. Your children will be saved. They're coming in. I shall. children is coming in. They've been Oh. 
3 says, First Samuel chapter 15, verse 3 says, I'm going to try to get this up. If I can. Let's go. 
Go back to somewhere where you'd rather be best saved. Best saved. Say best saved. Here's your mind, best saved. So keep. Now God don't want to saw all the doors sliding in. But God don't want you. He don't want you to sit down and go, 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 go. He don't want you to go down there and gospel the tip of name down. God give you a sign, man. He will anoint you. I want only I want people you a sign. So, so I'm giving you a sign, man. I want you to get rid of the enemy that attack my people. Yeah. They think I don't forget about them. They got people that want to get you. They, they, they think God don't forget about God. They ain't forgot about. God ain't ready to deal with the people that try to take us out. Yeah. They try to set us up. Come on, try to use us, deceive and scour and persecute and lie and false accusations. God ain't ready to deal with the enemy. Verse four says. He said, so I kill everybody. When he said, so I what? Kill everybody. Verse 4 says, And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them into land, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judea. Amen. He had 12,000 men to go to war with. God always sent you some people to go to war with. Yeah. He always will see your prayer point that you can trust. Yeah. He always will see your prayer group that you can trust. He always send a prayer group that you can trust. He always gonna send somebody that's gonna go to walk with you, not to look down on not to take a name down, but to go to walk with you. Not to find your business out and used to take a name there. I just wanna go to war with you. I just wanna pray with you. I just wanna fight the devil with you. Come on, somebody. I don't wanna fast with you. I wanna pray with you. I wanna go to walk with you. I got your back and you got each other back. We're gonna pray together. Hallelujah. Now verse 9 says, verse 9. I'm sorry, go to verse 8. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Now who he took with him? The king. Go to him. The first thing that he killed the king. He took him with him. Me and Rebecca was on the first assignment. With no promotion, but you're missing. He's a kid of everything. Now he's just been anointed. Been anointed. It's not your anointing, you still make mistakes. It's not your anointing, you still can sin. That's right. It's about pressing on you to get the job done. Yeah. Amen. And it says that he took the king with him, he took him alive. Amen. But he destroyed some of the people with the edge of the sword. And verse 9 says, But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vowed and refused that they destroyed utterly. Now look what he saw did. He had the peoples. God didn't give the assignment to the peoples. Come on now. That's when we give a prophecy, you go, I said go left, you go right, you go wrong. Mm -hmm. right. I tell you what God said, but it's up to you to carry it out. Amen. And I'm never going to say what God said, that's it, I'm through with it. But if you don't carry it out that way, you could have let something happen. Don't look at me, I'm going to look at God. God made a little escape, you will take it. And sometimes God make a way to escape for his people, they still mess up. Go the wrong way. And it says that uh, they said he saw all the people took the king and the auction, they took her. And in the land, they took all everything that was good. So everything that was good, he kept it. That's when you have to be delivered from mature stuff. Come on now. I'm coming. They took the king, they took the land, they took the auction, took all the good stuff. So I can use this to make some money. I can use this. I can use this. I can use this car. I can use this house. I can use this job. I can use this business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. So now he took, God said, Quit, he said, kill everybody, right? But he took all the good stuff. He took the king, the land, all the good stuff. He took it. And there he goes. And God, yeah. God look at that. Yeah. Yeah. God, look at that else. We can't hide from God. He sees everything. It's when you mess up and should repent. Yeah, come on. Yeah, repent. In between you and God. 
He made the way where you had to go to the, the priest to repent and do a blood sacrifice now that in the Old Testament. Now you can get between you and God. He made it a clean for you. Amen. Amen. And it says that, that now Saul, no doubt, anointed king, it seemed like he would have come and did it right for a while or something. Yeah. You get anointed and messing up right now. You know, don't like you might slip an issue or something, but he got anointed and, and messed up right then. And then he keeping the good stuff. And so he goes to get rid of all this stuff. You know, there's something about life. Everything we desire, everything we want, everything we like, God said, don't touch you. Yeah. Talk to you about it. Amen. You know, amen out there. Amen. Like, you know, you already do some touching, so you can say amen. So I say amen. I can't be out there. Amen. Amen. I'm just trying to tell you everything that God don't want us to do, that we want to do. Everything God don't want us to do, we desire to do. Come on, talk to this. Come on, stop. And it's a whole roll. Hallelujah. I'll stop going through our mind. We want to do Come on, but then we think about God, we can't do it. And a lot of stuff I've never did, but I never always say. I, I know a lot of things I can be doing. <laughs> Amen, but I love God. And I can touch it. Amen. And so what happened? We like food. So what's the food? We love eating the food, the wrong food. Come on, talk to me. Come on. We like to eat the wrong food. Amen. So we everything ain't good for you, that's what we just want to touch. And every man that I like sweet. I like cocoa. I cocoa ain't good for you, but I do it every man. <laughs> sweet ain't good for you, but I do it every man. I'm gonna try to take the stuff that good for you if you like it. Amen. Amen. So what happened? God said, Don't touch all this stuff. And he touched it. He kept it. Verse 9 said he what? Somebody said he kept it. Somebody said he kept everything. So he was rebellious against God. Verse 10 says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, Okay, now the word came unto the Lord. This is verse 15. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord by God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Okay, now, he said the people, he didn't get people to else happen. He didn't know the people in position. He didn't know the saw, but he tried to put it on the people. So. Uh -huh. Amen. So, uh, and maybe, so maybe so I lied to God. Amen. Verse 12 says, And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul cometh to Carmel. Carmel. And behold, he set him up a high, set up a place, and is gone about and passed on and gone down to Gilgal. Verse thirteen. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. So he lied to Saul. He said he performed the commandment. He said I killed everybody. Did he tell him that? Now, how are you going to tell the prophet that the prophet God already told the prophet that he already told him everything? Stand here or not? God already told him saying everything when he died. Amen? Hallelujah. But I said something God already told him. I already told him. Verse 11, he told him. Amen? Let's go to verse. Um, let's go to, so now, let's go, now, let's go to verse 14. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this? Bleeding of the sheep in my ears, and the lorn of oxen which I hear. So Samuel said, If you killed everybody, why are we hearing, why are we hearing that? You said you killed everybody, you did the coming of the Lord. He said, Why, why is I'm hearing the bleeding of the sheep? Why are we hearing sheep? Why am I hearing in my ear the, the auction which I hear? Why am I hearing the animals? He died to the prophecy he killed everybody. I didn't come in with God told me. So since the God I don't call Samuel up and told me what Samuel saw and missed up back, right? And now he hearing it for himself. Amen. So let's go to, let's go to verse 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me. This night, and he said unto him, Say on. 
I'm just going to verse, so now let's go to verse 32. Then said Samuel, Bring ye hither to me Agag the king of the Malachites. And Agag came to him delicately. And Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. And let's go to verse 33. And Samuel said, As thy sword hath made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. So Samuel cut the king up in pieces. Samuel, the prophet, the judge, had to do Saul position. Is anybody doing your position? Hallelujah. So if you don't do what God tell you to do, you'll replace you and let somebody else do it. Was it Psalm 2? Kill everybody. Kill the king, the animal, the baby, the dog. Kill everybody. He brought back the king. Now Samuel, the prophet, got to do his position. Because he didn't carry it out right. So he's just saying, you, so Samuel cut the king up in pieces, right? So he said, cut him up with his sword. So when God got a sign to do, Work to do, if it ain't done right, if it ain't finished, he'll allow somebody else to take it on in. He said, So you don't want to take that king out. Amen. So Samuel had to do, Samuel had to do Saul's position. Amen. Verse 35 says, And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented. That he had made Saul king over Israel. God repented as he gave him a decision. Oh God, you know my dear us. He repented because he gave Saul a position to be a king. He didn't carry it out right. Amen. And now Saul moment for something God don't reject. Send your moment for Saul. What it says here, verse 35, it says what? If Samuel came no more to see Saul, right? What well, come back to see you for it's finished? <laughs> God will reject you. He don't lose you. And it says that, uh, what it, is, it, it says that Saul until the day of his death. Now when Samuel, I'm going to send your mom for Saul. I'm going to let this sip stick for me. Samuel mom for Saul. You know why Saul, you know why Samuel your mom for Saul when he messed up? Call a good leader. But mom for those members. Come on. Amen. 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 A good leader will feel your burden, your pain. I know God will reject you. I know God is going to lose you. I know God moves you out the way and puts out over you. But we still have that feeling. You, you, you still have feelings. You know sometimes you still don't have feelings and have a pain. I'm talking about a good leader. And concern. So I said, concern. You still gonna have compassion. You still gonna, amen. You still gonna feel the pain. You still gonna kind of go through with them. Because you remember the serving they were done, but God had replaced them. I don't know why God talking about replacing. But it's going, it's going, like, it's going in high places. I'll tell you that. So replace that you're going to go in high places. So the president is going to go in the pulpit. So the president is going to go take out for God to read. Replace some people that are not doing the work you want to do. A lot of people are not pulpit. They're not doing what God called them to do. And God to read what they in the pulpit. He's going to replace yeah. 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 some people yeah. in positions in high places. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is going to shake on this earth. A shaking God. That's a replacement you're going to take place because of people being rebellious. People not going to want to live right. People don't want to do what God said to do. People don't want, amen, the will of God. People are not being laid by the Holy Spirit. They're being laid by the flesh. Hallelujah. So God said, God said, Saul, stand your moan for Saul. He moaned for it. Amen. And the Lord repeated that he made him what? King. Because a lot of people repeat. God repeated about that he put them up. God got ready to bring some people down. Some people time is up. Amen. Verse 16 and 
I want to tell you what. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thy mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Okay, now we always talk about David got anointed. We always talk about Saul. We always talk about David got anointed. We always talk about David took Saul's place. But you never know why. Amen. Come on. Someone said, now I know why. Now I know why. Why did David, why did what move Saul and, and get rid of Saul? Why did he got one David got rid of Saul? Because he was what? Rebellious. He's a kid, everybody. He took some stuff with him. So God replaced him. Come on. He what? He replaced him. Hallelujah. He says, How long will you mourn for Saul? And that's when people moan for stuff in their life. You moan for that old baby dad, that old girlfriend, that old boyfriend, your old friend. And God said, how long will you moan for them? Old to old family friend, don't, don't reject you. Don't want God, don't want the word, but you still moan for them. And yet, come on, talk to me, somebody. And God is saying, well, how long will you moan for stuff that's in vain? How long will you pull up for stuff that's not in vain, that's in vain? How long will you stay in stuff that's in vain? How long will you hold your life up? How long will you moan for Saul? How long will you moan for that boyfriend? How long will you moan for that girlfriend? How long will you moan? Come on, somebody. For the people that came against you. How long will you moan for that husband you got divorced for? How long will you moan for that wife? He said, I have rejected them. My boss, I got a new king for you. I got another new queen for you. I got a new husband for you. I got a new wife for you. I got a new Okay. 
you captive in bondage, like in prison, you can't get out. But the Bible says the anointing you will destroy every yoke. You say you will break every yoke. God is setting your mind free this morning. Setting your mind free.
book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, how Saul was chosen to be king. We, we know this. How um, people wanted a king as they saw everybody else with a king. They feel as if they should have him. So God say, okay, have a king. And that's how God is. He'll give you something you really don't need just because you keep asking for it because you think you need it or this will <laughs> benefit you. He'll be like, okay, have it. I'll show you in the long run, or not so in the long run, that this thing that you ask for and you made a fuss about, or you compared yourself to someone else saying, I should get this too. But he's keeping this away from you for a specific reason. He said, I'll let you have it. And see how it'll mess you up. Yeah, it will. So he gave them call. Preach. Did God know Saul was going to disobey him from the beginning? Yes, he did. Why? Because God is omnipresent. He is all-knowing. He's everywhere. Nothing surprises God. Did the people know that Saul was going to disobey God and mess up? No, they didn't. But God. So in our text, here's where I'm going to start. You all already got all that good teaching, all that good preaching, all that foundation was laid for you. I just want to pull out something for you, a few things. But if you look in your Bibles, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, I want to begin right here at verse 2. And it says, Thus saith the Lord, of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he lay wait for him in the way, and when he came up from Egypt. Verse 3, now go and smite thy wretches God has given him. And utterly destroy, that means kill everything, make sure nothing is still breathing. All that they have and spare them not. Don't have no pity on them or anything. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, babies. The ones who are toddlers, the ones who are still sucking on the breast, kill them too. Ox, sheep, camel, and ass. Watch this. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in the in town. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. Watch this. Jump down. Now God gave this king instruction, explicit, explicit instruction. That means God gave him detailed instructions on what to do. God didn't leave any great areas for him to try to figure out well, did God really mean this? Or did he really mean? No, it was no great area. Nothing was cloudy. God gave specific direction. Go over here, kill everything. Destroy everything. Yeah. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. Come on, you Is it in your Bible? Yeah. He says, tear it up, kill it, destroy it. And so, verse Watch this. After getting all this direction from God, the king that they cried out for, that God gave them, look at what the king did. And he took Agag the king, Saul, the Amalekites alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. He took Agai the king of the Amalekites alive. He was supposed to kill the king. Come on. He kept the head, the wicked, evil head. Okay? 
and he hardly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag, that's the king of the Amalekites, and the best, watch this, and the best, and the best, y'all didn't get it, and the best of the sheep, and the best of the oxen, and the best of the fatties, and the lambs, and the best of the lambs, and all that was good, and would not only destroy them. Let me stop right there. See, he had a greed problem right there. Saul looked at how good the sheep were, the oxen were, the fatlings, the lambs, and he probably thought how they can profit him. And he said in his mind, I better keep these. I can make some money and just that. Just trying to let you know how he probably was thinking I can get some money. Oh, but this is my fault. No, but God told you to utterly destroy everything, even the good things. And see, that's where we go wrong. When it looks so good to us, sometimes we feel as if we need to hold on to it because it looks good. It may profit us in the long run, but if God say, let it go, destroy it, kill it, get rid of it, let it go. Because that thing that looks so good to you and you think it may profit you in the long run can be your downfall, can end, watch this, can end up destroying you. They 
destroyed, I mean, let me read that. But everything that was vile and refused, they that that they destroyed utterly. So he looked at all those things and he saw that he can probably profit from them and he didn't want to destroy it. But if God said, get rid of it, Saul, get rid of it, perish, get rid of the Eureka, get rid of it, Alaska, get rid, I don't care how much you love it. Because that thing will turn around and bite you in the butt and you wouldn't be able to do nothing. Now you're in court, you got to fight. Now you this and you calling for prayer. Now it's taking all your money because you got to pay the judge and the law. Because you didn't listen to instructions. Yeah, okay. Did not obey. Come on now. Preach. Tell the truth. God don't have to tell me something twice. Not this one here. Tell me one time. One time that's it. We, we hung it up. I learned my lesson years ago. And some of y'all wonder why I'm so tough, why I'm so hard, why I'm so, whatever y'all say, it's because I know how God is. Yes. So I'm teaching you and telling you because I want to see some of you go from what you going through right now because you're so hard-headed, God called stiff neck. You don't want to listen to nobody. You ever go through. Go by yourself. Go. And you know what? Sometimes people, when they go through, they try to pull you in their stuff. And then you look, you crying with them. Who I'm talking to? You feeling bad for them? That ain't your burden. That ain't your burden. Let, let them go through. You get caught up in them. That's when you look, you, and then when you look, that same demon that's beating their butt jumps on you. Y'all better know and learn how to let people go when they go through. The first thing you need to ask yourself, what did they do? What did they do to listen to God? Because they will put you in that mess and you'll be going through right along with them. Who am I preaching to? Am I in their power? I ain't coming in there with y'all. Y'all know me. I'm going to tell you straight up. I ain't going to tell you. Uh-uh. I'm not playing that. I'm going to give y'all the word. I'm going to give y'all good advice. And whatever decision you decide to make, that's you. But do not call my house. <laughs> Don't call. <laughs> After you made that bad decision, when you had good counsel. Don't call us. <laughs> oh, Pastor, you're too hard. You too. No, I'm just right. Y'all don't like it. Yes. I'm just right. I'm trying to teach a flock. See, that's, see other pastors will sugarcoat stuff, y'all. That ain't me. That will never be me. So y'all need to get used to this right now. This thing changing, y'all. I'm telling you. <laughs> this thing changing. Uh, like, let me, I'm going to use Stephanie for an example and I move on. Last Sunday they called me on the pulpit. Stephanie in the back there. Couldn't breathe. Couldn't this, couldn't that. And as I'm walking on the pulpit, the Lord speaking. She didn't take her medicine. She didn't do what y'all told her to do. She didn't do what Jeremy and Keith telling her to do. So when I got to Stephanie, I said, answer these person. I said, did you take your medicine? No. For God. Okay, y'all can't do that. We giving y'all instructions on what to do, and you still not doing it? Who fault is that? That's your fault. You cannot do that. Now it becomes a spirit of distraction. You see what I'm saying? So when you get good instruction, good advice, and we tell you what to do, do it. So we won't go through all this stuff. You won't have to call the ambulance. And they still didn't take her away. I gave her two minutes. I said, here. She, I don't know how many she ate, but when they checked her out, they left in the building. So what that lets you know? She okay. So just follow instructions. Saul did not follow instructions. 
I said, all that to come back here. He did not follow God's instructions. And because he didn't follow God's instructions, God rejected him as being king. Y'all listen to me. So God said, I have rejected Saul from being king. God, let me paraphrase. Because he didn't do what I gave him instructions to do. He didn't go into the land of the Amalekites and utterly destroy the king and everything. He kept the best for himself. So what does Saul do? He compromised. That's where I'm going to stop right there. Some of us are compromising our salvation. You know, know what's going there. Well, I can just go to the club one or two times. Uh, my friends just have a party and they just don't put it at this club and then you, know, you compromise in your salvation. You compromise in your, your stance with God. You compromise in your holiness. You compromise in your anointing. Why are you to, don't compromise the things of God? God, the Bible says, fight, contend for the things of the faith. Oh, the world, you can go all those places and then you get up in somebody's face and try to witness, testify. This girl, I said at the club last week, by the way. No, I was just there because my friends were not what you live for. <laughs> Compromising the things of God. Y'all think ain't nothing wrong with that, but it is because everything you do is a witness unto somebody else. That's good, guys. So we need to start letting go some of these things. All my club heads. <laughs> and you think it's still good. Y'all should have already done your last bit of clubbing. There ain't nothing out there anyway. So he said, I reject this song from being here. Watch the process. Jump down to verse 22. And Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as it is sacrificing, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice. To obey. When you get instructions, obey is better than to sacrifice. So sometimes, not sometimes, all the time when God gives you instructions. Or you get a prophetic word from the pastors. Why are you second guessing? Why are you second guessing? I'm not going to listen. I'm just going to do it my way. But okay, do it your way. And ask up the folks right now who are going through mess in this church. Why are they going through mess? They ain't listen. They rejected the word. Rejected instructions. And the book of Proverbs talks about that. So he said, to obey is better than the sacrifice. Watch this, verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And then Saul had a rebellious heart. He rebelled against what God told him to do. He rebelled against the instructions and the leadership of God. He did what he wanted to do. So that was, he had a stubborn mind, a stubborn heart. And God equated that to iniquity, idolatry, and witchcraft. Let me show y'all how that's witchcraft and idolatry. Because he had his own thought. When God told him to do a specific thing, gave him instructions, he thought, I can do it my way. I'm just going to keep these good sheep, these good oxen. That's the idolatry there, his own thought, which became iniquity, which is the sin as witchcraft. Stubborn. He became stubborn in his heart. He became stubborn in his will. He did whatever he wanted to do. And so there you have it. And God rejected him as being king. But let me say this. God is going to, like my wife just said, replace and remove a lot of people 
not only in ministry, because I, I already had a couple of dreams and I told my wife about one specifically, and I had that dream uh, like two, three times. I said, like, what? I'm not gonna call the person's name. And she said, yeah, New Church, I've been dreaming some things too, but people in ministry, high up in ministry, are gonna be removed and replaced and this, that, and the other thing. And that's gonna come. But the word of the Lord for you today is, I have to remove Saul so that David can rise to the occasion. And the word for you is he has to move something out of your way, somebody off your job so that you can get the position you've been praying for, you've been fasting for, you've been fighting for. See, he's going to remove some folks so that you can rise to the occasion. If you don't believe that's too bad for you, but that's what God does sometimes. Right now on my job, I'm not going to even call names, I ought to be surprised that somebody is going to be removed from free people. And the way they're going to be removed is, I'm not even going to say it in the mic, I want to say it, but let me hold my toe. Let me tell you something. And I'm sitting down trying to figure out what's going on with these folks, and I'm getting phone calls. Tell me what's going on. God will move folks out of your way. Just for you to get what he said you supposed to have. That's how God works. I don't care how you feel, I don't care what you think. Let me tell you something. God knows who to move, when to move, and sometimes the people who we like so much, he'll move. Because that could have been the person hindering your next move. And you didn't even know. So he had to get Saul out of the way. And I, I, I want you to see this. And then I'm finished. I'm not preaching and I'm trying to do a little teaching. And so it says right here, I think it's Lord. Watch this, verse chapter 16, verse 1. And it says, read that for me, if you don't let me know how to read. And the Lord said unto Samuel.